Okay, Jess, um, this is just to show you how you can form the loaf so that you don't need to have to turn it out of a tin um, and possibly get it flattened like a souffle when you do it. Okay, um, so where we are at the moment, I've mixed it, kneaded it, proved it for the first time, knocked it back and then covered it over so that it can have an intermediate rest. This is important, after you've knocked it back it needs to have a bit of a rest to recover and then you can start moving on to shaping it the way you want to. Okay, normally that's between 10 and 15 minutes but it's kind of up to you. The way to tell whether it has uh, had its rest and it's ready and it's strong enough for you to move on is take the cover off and stick your finger in the middle. Okay, if it's ready for you to move on to the next stage, the hole will stay there like that. Okay, another way that you can do it is just push your finger into it and it should be strong enough to keep the shape that your finger has just made. If it just bounces back, you need to give it a few more minutes. Okay, so we're now ready to shape it into the, sh into the shape that we want. I'm gonna do a bloomer for you today because that seems to be the one that you, you uh, make the most. Okay, it's very, very simple and you don't need to put it into a tin. So all you need to do is start by flattening it out like so. Give it a nice lot of force like that. Get all the air out of it. Then you grab hold of it, you don't need to grip it, you grab hold of it and just shake it up and down and just gently tease it out from the sides. Okay, you can't see my fingerprints particularly, I'm not, I'm not gripping it too hard, but you do that. So it looks a bit like that shape, so it's a nice oblong shape. Now when you've done that, fold it in half towards yourself and again flatten it all out okay and then turn it round so that the seam you just created is over at that end then all you do is you fold it in a third of that from that side a third from that side so that it meets in the middle and press it down okay and then when you've done that, get your hands over the other side of it and start turning it into yourself. And what you're doing is you're rolling it up and force your thumbs in underneath that roll so that it's really, really nice and tight. Like so. And roll it up so that it's nice and tight. If it's too long, you can do that to it. You can put it in at the ends and then give it a nice roll and what you're trying to do now is you're trying to seal up the edges there okay because you don't want that coming undone so might look a bit of a mess at the moment but that will go away shortly okay and again it's a bit long there a bit long just do that to it you can roll it up so it goes in the middle there like that roll it up for a little bit and you can see the seam is now starting to, to go away. Doesn't matter, you won't see that anyway. Okay, so we've now got the basic shape of a bloomer. So we're ready to put it on the baking tray. So all you do, I've got a baking tray there with some baking paper Put it diagonally across the, the, the sheet because it will expand and so that you don't get that horrible little bit sticking up there just turn the ends down slightly make sure it's the shape that you want now I don't know about you occasionally when I've sliced the loaf um, at the very end it's deflated a little bit so what I do sometimes is if you want a bit of flour on the top, make it look a bit nice, sprinkle a bit of flour on the top and cut it now. Now I've got something called a grignette, which is basically a razor blade. 
in a plastic uh, holder. Um, so I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'll just do a traditional bloomer cut, which is a few slices like that. Doesn't have to be precise. That definitely isn't precise. Okay. Now we, we talked a little bit about needing to cover it whilst it's proving. Okay. Um, I don't do what they recommend you do, which is to put it in a, an airtight seal. I, I, I'm always worried that I'm going to rip the top of the bread off when I do that. So I've got a little half a, a very, very light tea towel. I'm going to put that over there. And then I'm going to put, I've got a freezer bag. I cut it so that, you know, I can use it on multiple different sizes of loaves. But I'm going to lay that over the top. Okay. Now. It's a bit different for you, you're in Florida, it's a very hot country, you've got loads of warm places I expect, okay? This is England and we don't. So what I do is I put it in the oven. Now, you, you'll have been able to hear the oven going on in the background there. I just put it on a very sort of low temperature, the lowest temperature it can go. Get it warm whilst it's having that intermediate rest. And then I'm ready to put it in. I don't need the fan on, I've turned the oven off and it will just be a nice warm place for it to prove. It only needs to be in there for about 30 minutes at the absolute maximum, any more than that and it will start to spread. But I'm just gonna put it in the oven. And I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna set my timer for about 20 minutes because then I can put the oven on and when you get to that sort of 25 minute, half an hour, then the oven's gonna be nice and hot. So we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, so I proved it for about 20 minutes. The oven's been on. It's now been proving for about half an hour uh, because the, I've got the oven up to temperature. It took a little bit longer than I wanted. A um, Couple of little things for this one is the use of steam when you're baking bread. Because if you put steam in at the same time as you put the bread in, it's gonna help with the loaf retaining some moisture during the first few minutes of it baking okay the yeast should still continue to aid it to rise whilst it's uh, starting to bake so if we put some steam in then um, what we do is we just allow that to, to happen nice and easily okay uh, what I do is I put an old baking uh, loaf tin uh, or whatever in the bottom I've got a glass of water, the oven's up to temperature, and I do that. I would say Terry doesn't like me doing it very much, so I'm a bit careful with it. So, how's our loaf done? Here it is. And that's come up quite nicely. Okay, one of the slits hasn't quite... Um, it open very much so I'll just ease that a little bit like so and then pop that in the other as gently as possible and I'm going to give that 21 22 minutes 23 minutes I think I ended up with uh, and that should turn out very nicely. Okay, so time's up, the beep has gone off, so it must be ready. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good to me. Just uh, do that test I told you about. Nice and hollow. And there you go. It's not perfect. But it's a pretty damn good loaf and that's going straight over to Laura and Ruby. All right, hope this has helped. Yes, um, any snags, you know where I am. Okay. <laughs>